Welcome to Brittle Star's really great show. I'm Brittle Star. Not really. Well, I am really, but it's not my name. And this is really great. A show in which our team captains lead our amazing guests on a journey of self-discovery. And by the end of the show, deep, deep regret. Let's meet our team captains. Film critic, radio star, and man who is on the treadmill TV at your gym, Richard Krauss. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Comedian, CBC, and Sirius XM featured comic and C-section loyalty card queen, Fiona O'Brien. Hello, how are you? All right, join us today for our two unsuspecting amazing people who have uh, apparently way too much trust in me. And uh, first up, please welcome Ethan Behrman. Joining Ethan today, please welcome Dan. Exactly. Please welcome Dan Matheson. Today's game is almost true. Mm. In this game, I'll be reading you a personal story from each guest. Everything in the story I'm about to tell you is true, except one element. We'll then test the bond the team captain and their teammate have built up in the roughly 40 seconds they've known each other by asking the team <laughs> captain to determine which element of the story is untrue. This is a story from Ethan and Rich and Richard. It's up to you to determine which single element is untrue. When Ethan and his wife were dating, they were supposed to see the musical artist Ariel Pink. But Ethan's future wife couldn't because she wasn't feeling well. So they didn't go. Being a good guy, Ethan promised her father that if they were still dating after the school year ended, because she was a high school teacher, he would take her to the first Ariel Pink show anywhere in the world. That first performance by Ariel Pink was in Dublin at the Boom Boom Room. And so they went. On the same trip, they also visited Iceland and London, England. Richard, which element of that story is not true? Well, it all sounds like nonsense to me, but let's start. Let me Lenny Briscoe this uh, and ask some questions. What grade was your uh, future wife, your date, teaching at the time of your first date? I actually don't recall whether it was ninth grade or 10th grade, but mm. here in the United States, mm. she was teaching high school English and it was either ninth or 10th. How much did the tickets cost? Mm. Uh, they were inexpensive. Um, I don't recall the exact dollar amount, but roughly $20 US a piece. And uh, in the US, when you pay for things, do they say, that would be $20 US, please? Or do they just say <laughs> that would be $20? Well, I just want to point out the superiority of the United States dollar. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that that I'm, works out for about $400 Canadian, I think. Exactly. Yeah, That's how spent. serious he was. That's how serious it was. There's $400 Canadian <laughs> per ticket. So, mm -hmm. uh, not well, uh, what, was, uh, what was she uh, feeling like? What was wrong with her? Oh, life? that's a bit personal. But please answer yeah. the question, Ethan. Yeah, yeah I want to know. I will answer the question. I believe that she ate some bad poutine. No. <laughs> Don't add other lies into the story, Ethan. Okay, so Don't add the, other lies into this one element, not two. Uh, poutine is very unlikely that she ate bad poutine because as everyone in Canada knows, there's no such thing as bad poutine. So uh, <laughs> we have to uh, move on from this. So I've, I'm, I've, I've made some notes here. I think um, that- Can I, Is this your guess now? Is this your, is yeah, this your this guess? Is guess. I, okay, I'm what's your guess? I'm gonna say that she canceled uh, for a reason other than not feeling well. So, Ethan, can you tell us what the untrue element was of the story that I told of yours? Yes. The untrue element was that I promised her father. I didn't promise her. I hadn't. Uh, I don't believe I had met her father yet when I made this promise. I promised her, my wife, Amy. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Why would he promise her father? Why exactly. would he do that? I, well, I told I take his know. daughter across the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, sir, I just wanted to come to you and let you know that if your daughter and I are still dating at the end of the school year, which sounds sketchy on its own, I'm going to take her anywhere in the world to see this artist that you have no idea who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, good man, you have my blessing. Fiona, it's going to be your turn this time to determine what the untrue element is in the story. Uh, and here is Dan's true story, apart from one element. Are you listening carefully? You ready? Yeah. Okay, good. Here we go. She got pen. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. <laughs> While on a trip to New York City for business, that's in America where Ethan is, Dan was at a restaurant for lunch in the same building as the Canadian consulate. While waiting for his lunch guest to arrive, he noticed the man next to him was also waiting for someone. The man took his wallet out of his pocket 
and unbeknownst to the man, an, en an envelope slipped out of his pocket at the same time and onto the floor. Dan picked it up and passed it back to the man, who was very grateful because they were his tickets for the New York Yankees game that night. Dan mentioned that Rob Thompson, who was the bench coach for the Yankees, was from his hometown of Stratford, Ontario. The man asked if Dan was planning seeing the game while in town. Dan told him he wished, but he was not. So the man took Dan's phone number and someone said someone would be in touch. A call came later from the man's nephew who offered Dan a ticket to the ball game and a ride in a limo to the game. Upon arriving, Dan was seated in the box seat behind home plate. The man he had chatted with earlier was an executive of the Yes Network who broadcast the Yankees games. They've since become good friends and maintain to be in contact to this day. What is the untrue element of Dan's story, Fiona? That story was just slightly shorter than the Carta. I just want to throw <laughs> that out there. There's a lot of I shortened it. there. I shortened it as well. Dan <laughs> sent me, it was like a five page thing. He had done some hand drawings as well. Right. This yep. is me you picking up the envelope. My appetizer. Like, you left out the appetite. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Fiona, what is the untrue element? So, Dan, you were in New you were in New York on business. Correct. And where were you having lunch? What was the name of the restaurant? It's a really nice spot at Fifth and Forty Six called City Lobster. City Lobster. Okay. And there was a Very man fancy. beside you, and he was waiting for someone to arrive. Yes, and he wasn't drunk. <laughs> okay. But were you? I was how did you know she was going to ask that? How did you know she was going to ask that? <laughs> Wow. Okay. So that's a bond. The man was taking his wallet out of his pocket and an envelope fell on the floor. Yes, yeah. Wow. Now, why was he why was he taking his wallet out of his pocket and he was still <laughs> waiting for somebody? That is a really good question. I never thought to ask at the time. Maybe he was just checking to see if he had like credit cards or something. You know what no, I mean? I, like, I, he doesn't something even have to have suspicious there. So this, so this guy, when you handed him back his envelope, and he, um, there was in the envelope was tickets to the New York Yankees game. Yeah. Okay. Now, how, <laughs> did he tell you that, or they fell out of the envelope? I said, I'm sure you don't want to lose this envelope, and he goes, You're right. They're my tickets to the Yankees game. God, he was given a lot of information, wasn't he? He said tickets for the New York Yankees, and then you started talking about you were like how do i make this about me i'm gonna oh Rob Thompson's from stratford <laughs> i said the yankees are my favorite team a yes. friend of mine is the bench coach of the yankees rob thompson what is the untrue element in dan's story the untrue element i feel is that i don't, don't think this man remained friends with dan <laughs> i think they're wow. he doesn't like him at all <laughs> wow <laughs> Dan's such a nice guy. That's my answer. They're not friends. The actual part that wasn't true, his nephew never called me. His assistant God. did. And she had arranged to pick me up. And can you imagine none of that would have happened if there was money in that envelope because Dan would have kept it. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us uh, thanks to our team captains Richard Krause and Fiona O'Brien special thanks to our special guests Ethan Behrman and Dan Matheson and thank you for watching this show which is really great it's only the name <laughs> thank you Dan thank you Ethan really appreciate right. it Bye, thank you Ethan. so much